Welcome to Save As Ability, a podcast to educate and inform you about disability employment issues. My name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Save As Ability. We've got our ADA 34th anniversary special today, I guess you could say. I think it was last Friday or uh, it's July 26th. So whichever, whatever the case may be, we're celebrating the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, on this episode and really what it's brought to people with disabilities. And just to go back before 1990 and look at all the laws that were put in place and they were always trying to like, I don't want to say band-aid, but they were always dealing with like very specific issues. And so what happened with the ADA is I think everybody recognized, Congress recognized, the advocates recognized, National Council on Disability did a lot of work on it, of which I was a board member way much later, but National Council on Disability had done reports and they all pointed to, hey, we really need a civil rights law to be able to protect people with disabilities from discrimination because let's face it, it was, it was rampant. And even today, it, it, you know, there's elements that remain of that. So we've come so far since then. We should be celebrating the ADA uh, bipartisan legislation. It was a great day for America. And so President George H.W. Bush cited in the law on July 26, 1990. And again, just highlights of the ADA. It's federal civil rights law that's meant to protect the civil rights of people with disabilities. And really what it is, it's an anti-discrimination law in many ways. And it has five titles that focus on the inclusion of people with disabilities and really all aspects of life. And the five titles kind of take us through that, right? So let's go over it briefly. The five titles are one, employment, two, the responsibilities of state and local government. Three, Title Three is public accommodations and the responsibility of the places and services operated by private entities. Title Four is telecommunications and Title Five is miscellaneous provisions, but that has some important provisions in it where it provides a list of certain conditions that are not considered disabilities, for example. So just a quick review. Let's go back now of Title One which we focus a lot on here, but not exclusively because these other titles are related. Uh, they're all interrelated and they're all interconnected. But really, uh, Title I employment is regulated and enforced by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And what are we trying to do there? We're trying to make sure that there are reasonable accommodations put in place for the person with a disability by the employer and done in a way that there's an interactive process, that it's rationally based, and it puts protections in there for both the employee for non-discrimination, but the employer as well. And it says, you know, important provisions like you got to be able to do the essential job functions, right? So it's very well thought out. And uh, really, it's the law of the land now. And, and really, because it was such a bipartisan act that has been accepted by really everybody, uh, it has such respect, I think, and it's a good thing. And then further, let's make a mention here of uh, what came 10 years later was the uh, ADA Amendments Act, because there needed to be some clarification. So I would think of the ADA as kind of like the Constitution, and then the Amendments Act is maybe like the Bill of Rights, where it went further to specify like definitions of disability and applications of it and things like that. Uh, so, all right, let's talk a little bit about Title II, the responsibilities of state and local government. Now, that is regulated and enforced by the United States Department of Justice, and that's making sure that uh, local governments, municipal governments, cities and towns, and state governments are making good on the responsibilities that they have, that government has to be a leader and really show that people with disabilities need to be included in all aspects of life, including all of the programs put out in the public realm, right? So- that's very important to make sure that people with disabilities are included in all aspects of life and not discriminated against. Title III is also regulated and enforced by the Department of Justice, and that is public accommodations and the responsibilities of places and, 
the services operated by private entities. So, I mean, really, what are we talking about here? This is like, you know, when you go out to the mall or you go to the shopping center or whatever the case may be, making sure that those places are accessible to people with disabilities. We don't think of it now because so many places are accessible and there's still a ways to go, by the way. But think of it like you used to have grocery stores that like, you know, the aisles couldn't fit a wheelchair or, you know, the signage was so small people couldn't see it. And like all of the things that now we take for granted, automatic door openers, escalators, things like that, that has brought access, that usability, that enhanced usability has also increased accessibility. A lot of that is because of Title Three of the ADA. So it's a good thing. All right, Title IV, moving on, because I want to get to other things, too. Title IV is telecommunications. That's regulated and enforced by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. And that really provides for things like closed captioning and, you know, it used to be touch-tone deafline and, you know, all of those types of technologies that were in place for people with disabilities. So Title IV is important. And then again, Title V really provided a list of the certain conditions that are not considered disabilities. So... You know, ADA is important. I value it. All people with disabilities, all Americans value the Americans with Disabilities Act. You know, America was really first in doing uh, a law of this magnitude and having the five titles that are civil rights law that protect people with disabilities from discrimination. So uh, while I was the director of the Massachusetts Office on Disability, which is essentially the ADA coordinator for the executive branch of state government, uh, it was during the 25th anniversary of the ADA. So a few months in advance, I had written President Bush a letter and I said, hey, Mr. President, thank you for signing the ADA. We're coming upon the 25th anniversary. You know, we're going to be celebrating it here in Massachusetts. Could you could you help us out with like, you know, commentary or something? And he sent me a lovely letter. Now, this is just a copy of the letter. The actual letter itself is framed and in, in the on the wall of the Massachusetts Office of Disability on Disability. Uh, but I wanted to share part of that with you. So think of the remarks like that he was talking about signing that that day. Again, a bipartisan law that had been worked on uh, for a good amount of time and really put in place. It really took a lot to be able to refine it. And so let me just read you a, a little bit of his remarks. He says, and today. This was July 26, 1990. And today, America welcomes into the mainstream of life all of our fed fellow citizens with disabilities. We embrace you for your abilities and for your disabilities, for your similarities and indeed our differences, for your past covered co courage and future dreams. Last year, we celebrated a victory of international freedom. He's talking about the coming down of the Berlin Wall. Even the strongest person couldn't scale the Berlin Wall to gain the elusive promise of independence that lay just beyond. And so together, we rejoiced when that barrier fell. And now, now he's talking about the ADA, and now I sign legislation which takes a sledgehammer to another wall. This, this paragraph is actually contained in the letter he, he sent me. And now I sign legislation which takes a sledgehammer to another wall. One which for far too many generations has separated Americans with disabilities from the freedom they could only glimpse, but not grasp. Once again, we rejoice as this barrier falls for claiming together that we will not accept, we will not excuse, we will not tolerate discrimination in America. George W. Bush, that's a great, George H. W. Bush, that's a great thing. So... We've come a long way. We've got a long way to go, but we're celebrating the Americans with Disabilities Act here. It's the 34th anniversary. I think it was last Friday when when this airs. I'm taping it before it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the ADA has protected people with disabilities. It continues to do so. We continue to refine it. There's still ways to go, but we've made great strides. So, David Darkangelo, save his ability. I'm fired up as usual. Let's go. If you need access to ADA episodes or more information about that, let us know. Put it in the comments. We want to provide great content for you. So if you can help us out with a like, subscribe, share, comment, we appreciate it. Save his ability, David Darkangelo, 
I hope you have a great day. For more information about disability employment issues, please visit our website, disabilityemploymentsolutions.com. The Save As Ability podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel at Disability Policy Expert, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment. Save As Ability lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com. Hashtag the new radio. Again, my name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Until next time. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.